do everything we can, and unless you want to speed your your time from uh, birth to death, uh, to slow that down and, and start to uh, have better quality of life. So, and where, you know, in, in hearing what Lorenzo's talking about, uh, you then have to think about how stress affects you personally. And we all have stress coming in, and it's how we deal with it that really is the difference between all of us. Mm -hmm. And so the ideal is to put into place practices where you are actually able to deal with the situations that are coming at you for the most part. And that's why it's really important that you develop a mind-body practice. And you know, in North America, it's not, hasn't really been part of the way in which I was raised or Lorenzo was raised. Uh, to have a mind-body practice. So for many people, it's new and, and foreign. And this is a great place where you look at you know, some of the things that you can do and you decide, if I've never meditated before, I'm going to get a friend and we're gonna sign up for a six-week meditation class. Or if I'm not able to leave the house right now due to my treatment or whatever is going on, then I'm gonna call a friend and we're gonna go online and we're gonna download the same meditation and we're gonna then share it afterwards, our experience. So there's many different ways that you can engage in a mind-body practice. So it could be meditation, it could be yoga, uh, you know, uh, Tai Chi, uh, you just want to look for activities that really um, empty your cup, that you feel that you have cleared your mind and given yourself a break from the very difficult things that you're facing. And, and, and the key word that you used was practice. You know, right. this takes time. Yeah. It takes, yeah. you know, a lot of people will say, you know, well, I, I can't meditate. Um, or I'm not flexible, I can't My mind yoga. is too busy. My right. mind is yeah. too busy, yeah. the hamster wheel and mm -hmm. the monkey mind. And, um, and it's true, it's, it, it is difficult, but anything that you try and do the first time, learning a language, learning to play an instrument, right. it takes mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. But the more you do it and the more that you put your brain and mind into that state, right. the better you are and the faster that you can get into that state. So, you know, the first time you do a meditation and then you're about to, conf in, you know, encounter a difficult situation and you try and meditate just before, well, you're, you're not gonna get into that same state that you did in the more relaxed, but the more you practice and the more you train your brain right. to move away from the monkey mind, then at, at a moment's notice, you can get into that, into that relaxed, State. And you can do you can start as quickly as washing your hands. That's a great place to start. Every time you wash your hands, you just really focus on the actual process of washing hands, what it feels like, you know, what's the sensation on your hands. Stopped at a red light, you know, taking three deep breaths, just following your breath in and out. And the breath is, is the exact place to start, you know, yeah. and all of all of the practices, regardless of what country and what kind of practice. It always starts with the breath and deep diaphragmatic mm -hmm. breathing, which may sound somewhat trite to just breathe deeply and you're going to feel better. But by breathing deeply, you extend the abdomen, you stimulate the vagus nerve. This increases parasympathetic arousal, technical term, decreases sympathetic arousal. But essentially, it means that it is, it is physiologically pushing your body into a relaxed state just by doing diaphragmatic breathing. Then you add, you know, some imagery practices and, uh, and off you go. And you can do that, you know, to understand what that is. If you haven't done it, just lay down on the ground and put your hand on your belly and practice breathing in and out and making your hand go up and down. Mm -hmm. And just slowly. These are great tips. And so for someone who's wanting to start, right, uh, never done meditation before, in terms of how many minutes a day or what time of the day would you have any recommendation or i mean you just gave very simple easy to practice right. meditate meditation um ideas which is fantastic but if i wanted to follow through my schedule every day mm -hmm. what is the best time of day to do meditation or how many minutes would you recommend many people that we talk to like to do it in the morning and in the evening I mean, ideally you want to build a practice, but as this is something new, if this is something new for you, you want to, you know, start small. So even a three minute meditation online 
uh, is an effective place to start or to doing one of these minute meditations. Um, you know, it's going to depend on you and how much time you have. But when you think to yourself, do I actually have 10 minutes to sit down and do a meditation? We all have 10 minutes. Um, personally, I find it easiest to do it either in the morning or at night when I've come home after, you know, after dinner. Uh, that's a great time because it actually helps you disconnect from everything. Uh, and it also sets you up for potentially better sleep. So um, those are the two times that you know, we hear are most popular, but also we know of many uh, patients who you know, will be in a, st a stressful situation and they will simply sit down where they are and actually just follow their breath. Yeah, and, and people who engage in this during stressful situations in the waiting room, waiting to see right. your doctor, when patients are literally in the MRI machine or on the, uh, the um, uh, x-ray uh, table or getting their radiotherapy, mm -hmm. um, short periods of time engaging in it for two minutes just decreases uh, stress. And if you have ear, you know, earphones, you can use your phone and download, uh, there's just thousands of apps or you know, uh, thousands of, uh, of meditations. meditations yeah. And you can just plug yourself in so that you are not participating in everything else. Yes. That's right, right. you yes. can disconnect where you need mm -hmm. to. That's fabulous. And um, so we already talked a lot about managing stress and um, some strategies, but is there anything, can we dive a little deeper into stress management? What else could we do uh, in our daily lives to reduce stress? Um, I guess a big part of it, and it's an overused term, is, is uh, mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, and not mindfulness from a mindfulness-based Vipassana practice, but you know, learning to be more mindful of, of essentially everything you do, uh, the interactions that you have. Of course, first starting with yourself and trying to be um, more deliberate with the things that we choose to do and not to do. Um, people stop, as Allison described it, at a, at a stoplight and immediately go for the phone um, and in a very mindless, reactive way. So, you know, more often than not, and, you know, I, I experience this myself, that, you know, we're on automatic pilot. We're on, in some sense, almost like this very low-grade fight-or-flight mode all the time and always doing, doing, doing um, and reacting instead of trying to purposefully engage in things. Um, and, you know, that's not easy, but I think it, it's, you know, not a specific technique, but it's just a shift of, of our attitude Mindset. towards yeah. our lives. Yeah. And, and I think that would be useful. And how we're, you rush, you know, you're rushing from one thing to the next, and it makes it, and it's stressful. And so you've, you've kind of taken on that stress by rushing. So if you try and be mindful of, I'm just going to do this specific task right now, and I'm not going to do anything else or think about anything else, so that then you, you fully engage in what it is that you're doing. Uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's an ongoing challenge, and you just want to slowly carve away at this block of stress in, with strategies that will work for you. And an added, an added thing is, is uh, you know, we've been talking about, I guess, what you could call these more Eastern mind-body practices, um, but uh, conventional Western-based practices like cognitive behavioral therapy, all the different forms of psychotherapy, um, you know, it is, it is expected and understood and normal for a cancer patient to be distressed or even depressed or anxious. Uh, at times during their diagnosis, the key that it doesn't become chronic. And we can, we've published and we've published specifically from MD Anderson in bladder cancer, ovarian cancer, and kidney cancer that patients who are depressed and don't manage it uh, don't do as well, um, regardless of how we define well, including, including mortality. So it's, it's critically important that people seek help um, to, to manage their mental health, uh, to have as, as good of a mental health in dealing with, with a life-threatening illness. Yeah. And that shift to a more positive way of thinking mm -hmm. about yourself and about those who are around you, mm -hmm. uh, 
one um, cancer patient who we know, you know, in, in undergoing and, and exploring many different options, but one of the small strategies she used was that she wrote stick stick them notes on her mirror and just around the house with very positive messages about how she sort of wanted to shift her thinking mm -hmm. and really found that to be effective to just remind herself to see the positive um, at, at any time. And that's that's really nice because we also had one of the patients that um, shared this with, with us that she uh, has set alarms on her phone like three times a day which sends her positive messages throughout right. the day right. just for her to just step back and enjoy the moment yeah. and the life that she has and, and the beautiful people and that's a cue to so be mindful yes yeah. exactly. Uh, and exactly absolutely yeah. and it's crazy that we don't think that normally right that we're yes. not seeing that for right. sure. that we have to be we reminded yes. to, to see it but we well, do if we the do. phone does it for us yes, then that's absolutely good. absolutely and so um, modifying these uh, six different factors in your life seems like a lot of work because it's um, for like you said we are all busy people we have we are going from one thing to the other like relentlessly right so do you have some simple suggestions um, in each area to get people started and how does this work when trying to support children um, to reduce their cancer risk what would you say uh, there are many small you know things that you can do small strategies in each of these areas i think what you want to look at is we, we you know listed six areas so i think that you need to think about what am i interested in making change in which you know which area am i interested in making change or which number of areas am i interested in making change and you have to you know if it's stress and you haven't meditated before you are going to need a partner to get you to a class or to you know engage in that if it's in your home and reducing uh, you know the toxic chemicals that your kind of your body is exposed to or your your cleaning supplies uh, in your house that's something that you may, that might be easier to accomplish so and I would assume that's a separate conversation in itself the the chemical exposure that we have around well that's us, that's right? the yes. that was actually the big challenge we had in writing this book right. is each one of these six areas yeah. could be a book in and of itself and the amount of advice mm -hmm. that could be written for each of, of the six. Um, but the key is to try, as we talk, and why we call it the mix of six, is to do some, to some degree in each area because they will help each other. If you don't have a good night's sleep, that's going to interfere with your yeah. metabolism of food and your food choices. Mm -hmm. And we talked about stress. If you aren't exercising on a regular basis, that's going to impact your fatigue and your sleep and changes the way that you metabolize food. Um, and, you know, so, so in the area of uh, social support, Allison kind of described it in his stress, we kind of described a few strategies. For the area of sleep, you know, the, the recommendation, National Sleep Foundation and other organizations, and the overwhelming evidence, including in cancer patients, is that uh, between six and a half and about eight and a half maximum nine hours of sleep a night. Anything outside that range is associated uh, with poor health, including higher risk for obesity, higher risk for mortality. Um, so, and, and we know that at least a third of the population has sleep-related issues, and it's estimated around 70% of cancer patients may have a sleep-related issue. Um, and there's lots of strategies, and, and we talk about a lot of them in the book, um, but one of them is ensuring that you set up your sleeping environment for sleep. So that'll include, uh, you know, the, the five senses. Right, we, we organized it around the five senses. And so those are things like, you know, temperature of your room, light, what you see in your eyes. So, you know, the LED lights on various devices, if you have them in the room, you can cover those, you know, blackout curtains if you can. Uh, you want to you want to be pay, pay, be paying attention to the whole the whole experience of sleep, disconnecting from your device. Uh, you know, maybe using a lavender spray with organic oils. Um, and you had asked the question, you know, how do you make this happen with children as well? And one of the things that um, is very effective is that you bring your kids along with you. That this is a family experience of changing of anti-cancer living. Um, you know, whether you're, you have a diagnosis in the family or not, you can bring your kids along with you 
in the area, for instance, of diet, you know, we have a, we talk about the three bite rule. So everybody has three bites, including our guests, you know, who don't like vegetables. Because the first bite, you never like it. The second bite, you sort of don't like it. And the third bite, maybe you do. And then you get it 15 more times at, at different, you know, times across uh, weeks or months. So, you know, having half of your plate of vegetables, uh, one of the things around diet is that we, it's not about taking away, it's about putting more of the good stuff on your plate. Um, so, you know, plan your meals around your vegetables. You know, prepare those first or think about which ones you want to do and then put, you know, a veget uh, hopefully a vegetarian option as many times as you can a week or a lean meat or fish. Um, you know, exercise, that's a great thing that you can do as a family. Uh, so instead of, you know, having reward, so much of what we do is rewarded with food. So if there's a celebration or something that's happening, let's get sure. cake, let's, yes. you know. Right. And really what's, what's a much better uh, option most of the time is to celebrate with an experience. So we all go to the park together, we take a bike ride, mm -hmm. we, we do something that's active and outdoors. That stays longer with you too. It that's does. Right. Yeah. And right. it's, it's, a, it's a, an experience for, that everybody shares. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that uh, Lorenzo talks about is that you know, exercise is kind of cut into two, two parts that we discuss. One is sort of sedentary behavior and the other is active, uh, like working out. And, um, I'll let you talk a little bit more about that. Well, I mean, again, the evidence is clear that, that uh, we really need to be exercising, moving a minimum of, of 30 to 45 minutes a day, five, six days a week. But it doesn't stop there. You have to just sit less. Because even individuals who are getting to the gym an hour a day, six days a week, um, they have worse outcomes, however you want to define that than an individual who does that and just sits less. And, so I'll ask and that you a can be literally, literally standing up because you're engaging your core, you're engaging your muscles. That's exactly what, what, what my question was going to be. Like, tell us about the standing desks. What do you think about, we see them in corporations and companies increasingly. Yeah, and the key is use your standing desk. I know a lot of you listening <laughs> have a standing desk and we just heard with somebody the other day yes. we were at an event and he said, I've got a standing desk, I just don't use it. <laughs> um, and he described a situation where, you know, he wakes up and he gets in his car. Uh, he just, you know, was lying down for eight hours if he got the right amount of sleep. And then 20 minutes in the car sitting, then sitting at work for, for four hours. And then he may get up and walk around a bit, then sit again for another four hours. And then may walk around a bit, go home and sit down and watch television or get on your laptop. So, I mean, it's literally as simple as standing up. Ideally, you know, I personally don't want to go to the gym for an hour a day um, and, you know, stare at a screen and, and not be with people. Um, so my preference, you know, at work I have, and we're sitting in my office, and if you turn the camera you would see, uh, you know, a standing desk with, with a, a recumbent bicycle so I can bike while I'm working and doing email. The best, you know, is, is a walking meeting. Uh, even with two people, three people gets a little more challenging, but so many people have, you know, one-on-one -on -one meetings. And in, in one walking meeting, you'll have clocked 5,000 steps. You know, you're halfway there in terms of the, the daily recommendations. Um, taking the stairs, parking as far uh, away in, in the parking lot from your destination, instead of always searching for the spot that's as close as possible, so you can walk as little as possible. Never stand on an escalator, never stand, yeah. you know, when you're on a, a walking walkway. I mean, all these things add up a, at the end of the day. That's significant, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my, um, this has been a great conversation. Thank you so very much. And uh, my final question, uh, because I know that a, a lot of our survivors may be lis listening in, and so what message would you have um, for our survivors when it comes to just integrating the mix of six and just, just survivorship in general? So, you know, I would say, um, you know, no guilt and no fear. Mm -hmm. You know, e every day is a new day and a new opportunity to engage in these things. For me, my weak link is, is my mind-body practice because I can't do it when I'm doing other things. As I just described to you, I can exercise 
and and have meetings and actually do my work. I'm not doing that very mindfully, but my heart's working, my muscles are working. Um, I can do work while I'm in, engaging in healthy eating. Um, and the mind body is a challenge, but you know, every day I set myself a goal. And if I don't make that goal, you know, be kind to yourself. And the next day, you try and uh, you try and do better. Um, and it's possible, you know, it is possible to lead, you know, an, an anti-cancer life and make our body. The key is make our body as inhospitable to cancer, mm -hmm. whether it is growing in you or not. And when if you think it's not growing in you. It is. Everyone has mutating cells constantly happening in our, their bodies and, and the key is to have all of our systems working properly to try and keep things in check. So um, would you, this is, this is the book that um, Dr. Cohen and Allison has written. It's called Anti-Cancer Living. Tell us a little bit about where we can find this book, how we can order, pre-order, uh, how can we access uh, this so book? So it comes out uh, May 1st, officially, um, and as, as the term goes, it's available where all books are sold. Okay. Uh, of course, Amazon is, is the go-to site, so it's available for pre-order, and it would, uh, if you pre-order, it'll be on your doorstep, I think, May 2nd or May 3rd. And on um, all versions, like audio, um, yeah, all the versions. Yeah. And for the for international viewers, yeah. uh, there's a number of international markets uh, releasing it. They're in, you know, the ones that are in a different language are currently in translating oh, okay. uh, mode. But May first, it'll also be released on the uh, Amazon UK website. So for you know UK, India, mm -hmm. um, and other Commonwealth uh, countries. It, will be available May 1 as well. That's amazing.